You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. <laughs> From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Dexter After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Dexter After Show. <laughs> Whoa, what a change up with the song. <laughs> hey, everybody, Bing is for doing, and here we are doing another amazing After Buzz TV after show for your favorite show, Dexter. We're on season eight, episode eight, nearly oh. over halfway through the season now. Are we there yet? <laughs> just I'm sorry, guys. I just had to go for Zach. You know, where's his head at? Yeah, no, Stephen, I actually totally get it, and it's, it's a wise choice, and it's, it's, it took me a second, but... But it was a good. It was a good call. <laughs> well done. If only there was a song that was called "Where's Your Brain At." <laughs> well, wait, is there a song like that from there, Fight Club? There's from uh, Nerd. There was a uh, something about uh, "Do you really love me?" And or "Do you really love my brain?" Something that was, it was, it was yeah. a while ago. It was between that and "Insane in the Membrane." I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would have loved "Insane in the Membrane." Anyway, so let's talk about our topics. Should we start over <laughs> oh, anyway? Let's talk yeah. about our names first. Hello, everybody. I'm Sean O, and I'm joined here by my awesome co-host, and Steven's in the booth tonight. Well, I'm Anna Koppel. <laughs> and I'm JJ Jurgens. And I'm in the booth. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be t discussing Zach is dead. Huge. Oh. Holy moly. Holy monkey brains, right? <laughs> and yeah. we're going to be talking about Vogel getting the brain piece because we don't know, even though we suspect that she's a killer, we don't really know yet. Uh, Hannah stays in Miami. So that, that part went nowhere, right? Comedic episode. So this, this episode was a lot more lighthearted. Uh, Deb wants to leave Elway's firm and finally... Deb's evolution and how she's changed. Anyway, let's get started on uh, Zach is dead. No, just when we started to like yeah. him, right? No, what? Why? I'm and I'm sad, not just because he's dead, but because Dexter doesn't have this project, and I thought that was gonna be really good for him. I thought this was gonna be a good move for Dexter. It was like him putting a granite countertop into his apartment, right? <laughs> <laughs> he was working on this guy. And it was such, so hard as a viewer because, like we said, it's taken us a while to like him. And so finally we were on board. Th this episode, I'm like, oh, he's great. You know, he's cute. He's funny. It's nice seeing this little dysfunctional family and having Dexter have the project. And then, yeah. and then they just <laughs> stripped it away from us. They and did. Our, our YouTubers were right. Of course, there was no scene where Zach killed Cassie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, of course, now we find out this episode that somebody framed him. Yeah, we did, and we, we don't know exactly who yet, but I wanted to mention our YouTubers right now, since we're talking about them. Uh, well, let's just talk about the ones that mentioned that Zach thing. Uh, from Bart Scantlin, he said, you guys saw Zach kill Cassie? I missed that scene, because it never happened. <laughs> yeah, it didn't happen, he's absolutely <laughs> right. And it's just, everything was pain, even Dexter, when he went into that crime scene, he was he was even painting Zach into it. And then, you know, while, while I was, you know, watching the episode, I was thinking to myself, could Quinn have done this? Because Quinn had intimate knowledge of the murder scene, right? He, he's, he's been there, he's doing the investigation, he knows what the crime scene looked like, he has the photos, he, he could have replicated it, but there's no motivation for Quinn to do such a thing. But here's why I feel like it could only be Vogel, because that was... That was Zach's um, throwaway card that he bought for like $2,000 or $1,200, whatever it was. And as far as Quinn knows, he only has the uh, his BMW. So uh, it, it, Vogel has the, that more intimate information. And so and we know Dexter didn't set him up. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And I know, that, I know, Steven, you have, you really feel like it's not Vogel, if you want to talk about that. Um, I mean, I don't know. So many things make sense with what, I mean, Sean said something that really piqued my interest with when Scott Reynolds on the Dexter Wrap-Up podcast said that Vogel does not fit the code. Well, technically, what is the code? The code is somebody who murders innocent people. 
And then Sean said something about, well, everyone who's been killed so far by the, the brain surgeon is not technically an innocent person, if you think about it. And that right. Zach killed two innocent women. Um, the other guy was forced to shoot someone in the head before he was killed then by the brain surgeon. So it kind of triggered it. Well, maybe Fogel, sorry, Vogel does not fit the code. And that's what we're leading up to in the finale, and that Dexter is going to have to put on t the table basically himself, someone who's following his code, and go through, oh my God. So And that, and Vogel's been picking him apart psychologically this whole season and saying, hey, you don't do this, you don't do that, you don't really love Deborah, all this kind of crap. And it'd be interesting, it would, see, it would kind of fit her arc to see her psychologically messing with Dexter. Well, are you, are you admitting that you're a monster if you're going to justify putting me on your table? You know, Stephen, I'm really glad that you brought that up, that she said uh, that, he, that he doesn't really love Deborah because I was shocked to hear her tonight uh, when they had their, their little dinner. She's like, oh, you just make a great couple, and you're blushing. I'm like, what is she doing? Why is she suddenly mm -hmm. like, oh, She's you're... She's jealous. She was such mm -hmm. an awkward mother-in-law, it felt like. Yeah. <laughs> It, it was like clearly does not like the new girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, it was really weird. And I could see them doing something like you mentioned, Stephen, about the whole manipulation thing. I could see her pitting them against each other in some way and and maybe making that as her justification to kill them if Vogel is, in fact, the brain surgeon. Yeah, see, I agree with you. I, I do think it's Vogel, too. I don't think Quinn would I don't think Quinn would stoop that low just to put the kid behind you know, bars. I don't think he'd go that far as to framing him. And I, I think this whole time she's been manipulating and, and just using people, and I, I just think between her eyes are just so evil. <laughs> She's, you know, and, she has evil and then eyes. she had that weird moment at the dinner table too, when she was alluding to what had happened to her past in her past, and I don't know. It was just, it's just, just definitely creepiness in there that I, I, I definitely think it's her. I gotta, I'm gonna butt in here for one second. Yeah. Go ahead, Stephen. I gotta ask though, because there's, of course, we think that maybe Vogel has something to do with this and all this, but at the same time, where does, what's her motivation for? framing Zack with the murder of Cassie and then killing him. I mean, it shows that, it, I mean, aside from just trying to see what Dexter would do, like his reaction to Zack murdering someone innocent and then going back on it after she convinces him not to, but, I mean, is it, could there be two two plays at play right here? Like somebody framed Zack and then the surgeon killed Zack? Well, I think that... Uh, Dexter is special to her that she said from the beginning you're very special and you're one of a kind and I think you know that he is her star student or what I he, you know I think he's the, her special project and uh, so I think that could easily be just a manipulation to see how he would react you know to come home and find that kid in his chair without the back of his head mm -hmm. is you know not fun <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, it's not a lovely welcome home. I feel like she is his creator and she could very mm -hmm. well be the person who wants to take him you know take him out of this world too, right? She gave him the code. She gave him everything that Dex she gave Dexter everything that he is. She's got this whole longitudinal study. Mm -hmm. She's followed him for many like two over two decades, probably almost three decades of his life, right? And she probably sees flaws in him and she want maybe she's finding mm -hmm. a reason to kill him. If he went that further step and did something she didn't like this season, what's to stop her from taking him out? Like, oh, Dexter, you're not who I thought you were. I'm so disappointed in you. And she's just like, okay, and now you're going to be added to my brain chunk collection. I, would... I kind of feel like these are all tests, too. Like, she's just been testing the whole, the whole time. And like you said, now maybe it was her project to see, okay, would he be able to mentor somebody and take somebody under his wings? And now she's going to test what it would be like if she kills that person. How will he deal with that? And what reactions will he have? I'm seriously going to hate it if we end the season and I hear the line, I created you and I can destroy you. I would be so disappointed if they say that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, I very well could see it happening, though. <laughs> um, yeah, that dinner that they had was was so awkward. Um, but it was it was kind of funny at the same time, you know, like this this we're going to jump ahead a little bit. But this episode was it was really comedic. There were so many puns and plays on words that were being thrown around. Mm -hmm. And I, I really enjoyed it. How, how did you guys feel? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I loved it. I thought, you know, and I, I think this is really where we all kind of got on board with Zach, where he was just like, 
oh man, yeah, totally. Like I should have plastic, right, right, yeah. Oh, gloves, <laughs> duh. Like, and uh, you know, so that was a lot of fun and um, just, and it was kind of like, okay, thank God all the storylines are coming together with yeah. just everybody meeting in the kill room, which I thought was, you know, just poetic. And, uh, you know, is she cool? Is she cool? She's cool. Okay, you have like two hot chicks fighting over yeah. you. And there's just so many things that were just fun and silly and really lighthearted for all the murder that was going on. Yeah, I totally agree with, I like them all coming together too, and then one of my favorite lines during that scene was when Dex then comes in and he's like, oh, you're both still breathing, that's a good <laughs> sign. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of good moments in it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, how, how funny was it too when they were looking all of them talking about the the murder, right? Uh, Cassie's murder, and then they go and look at the crime scene photos on uh, on like Dexter's whatever memory card or the internet or whatever yeah, he yeah. used to access them, <laughs> putting them out there on his his database. Yeah, that's smart. <laughs> um, but uh, they're all looking at that, and I thought to myself, police departments should really hire serial killers so they could get more insight how, into how crimes are committed. Right? Go ahead and watch yeah. Hannibal then. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what Hannibal is. If you want that, go watch it. But, I mean, I don't know. I like the dinner scene that uh, Zach is kind of the the viewer, in that he's the one who's saying what we're all thinking during during the during the dinner. But of course, whenever you have someone like that, they're very short lived because it has its it has its play, and then you're kind of done with it. It gets old. So as soon as we kind of saw him doing that, it was like, okay, he's got an expiration date on him. Also during the visit to Vogel's house, we see her controlling personality surfacing. She's saying, oh wait, who is that? Why don't you invite mm -hmm. her in? Oh, why don't you have him come in? Oh, let, you know what, bring her over here. And then elbows off the table. Oh, do, pass me the plate, mm -hmm. right? She's just directing everybody to do what she wants. And, and maybe that's, that's, that's showing us more. That's giving us some more clues to that she is behind all this. Steven, any, in th uh, any thoughts, insights? I think that's a good thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it was really uh, a nasty comment, actually, as they're leaving. Um, Hannah says, thank you again for dinner. And Vogel says, it's refreshing to see a girl who can really eat. That's, I mean, what is that? You know, you don't say that to another woman. Mm -hmm. It's basically saying, like, you're a cow. That's, you know, like. She, she definitely has women issues, I feel. I don't really think, is there a woman that she's been nice to? I mean, she was rude to Deb, like, and she was always trying to pit them against each other. And, yeah, and she was <laughs> condescending to her there. Yeah. I don't know. Well, was, what I think is going on with Vogel, and I might be wrong, because the YouTube commenters say we're always wrong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We love that you guys. we're idiots. Well, she's... She's breeding her own killers, and she's breeding her own livestock to kill. I mean, we have Dexter. She's a control freak. We know she's a psychopath, because she's a control freak, especially with Dexter, especially with everything. And it's kind of like a farmer breeding livestock to her. She's, if, if we're right, and she is the brain surgeon forcing people to do things, and then making them fit her own code or hit fit Harry's code to play with Dexter, it would make sense that she needs to create these killers, and then she already has her killers, and she's like, oh, here's Dexter, why don't you train this guy? Okay, now I'm creating a second generation to my livestock. I don't know, it's interesting. Yeah, and she's, and she's testing Dexter to see what he's gonna do with this, and because ultimately, Zach shouldn't have been trained because he already killed an innocent person. So she shouldn't mm -hmm. have been eligible to be in Dexter's internship program. <laughs> True. Right. <laughs> My question to you guys, though, is so Zach killed an innocent person, therefore he fits the code. Okay. Well, did, was he seeing Vogel before he killed Norma or after? Because if Vogel was the one that persuaded him into killing Norma in the first place to get him to fit her code, because that's the only person that he's killed that was innocent. The, the guy, he had proof that he strangled the girl. So he only fits Dexter's code through Norma. And if Vogel is going through Dexter's code to prove a point, that would be the only way to make Zack fit it. That's really interesting you bring that up, Stephen, because <clears throat> I wonder if this was, if Zach was one of the main reasons that Vogel came back to Miami, because remember Deputy, Math Deputy Chief Matthews, he has a relationship to her, 
too. He also mm -hmm. says, oh, we should use Vogel on the case. She offered to help, you know? So maybe she's set everything up from the beginning, playing everybody like chess pieces. Once, because she knew about Max. She's only in Miami for, for, I mean, Zach. She's only in Miami for Zach, and then she's like, okay, well, maybe I can, you know, something, something here. And fix up a nice casserole Dexter all of <laughs> mode. I don't know. Well, and that's, yeah, I was going to bring up the casserole also because I, some, somebody, JJ, I think you said that some, some one of you said about uh, her um, testing them and whether or not they disappoint her. And she said, oh, it's too much red wine. And Zach was like, mm -hmm. yeah, too much. And Hannah's like, oh, no, it's perfect. And of course, you know, that's such a typical thing for people to do when they're like, serving dinner they're like oh it's terrible and everybody's like oh no 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 so that's meal of my life that, that was a spark that set her off that's why Vogel <laughs> killed him I feel like it could be I feel like it, you know maybe she would have let him live a little bit longer but you know and he put his elbows on the table you know it's just like yeah Zach where is your brain yeah, get it together kid get it together <laughs> So, I th I, was there anything else that we want to talk about? That awkward dinner or Zach being dead? That yeah, just, <laughs> I was surprised actually that his he had his brain cut out. Yeah. I I thought he was just knocked out or or someone killed him and left him there, but intact. She took <laughs> she took his brain. Yeah, I thought he was strangled because I thought he had marks here. Is what I saw at first. So I was surprised by that. Yeah, I. I'm having, I'm going to have trouble believing at this point, and you know, I, I could be a moron, YouTubers, but uh, it's okay, we love it, we love the attention. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna have trouble believing that it's anybody but Vogel because she drove him home, Dexter took Hannah to the hotel, and they really only, I don't know, I don't know how many times they made passionate love, but. Uh, well, we saw his butt twice. We so. saw his butt twice, so... <laughs> and his it, clothing disappeared. <laughs> yeah, it just, it's like magic. <laughs> so He fell and his pants were gone. Oh, he was fumbling around for his pants before he fell. He just whipped that belt pretty quickly. You know, oh my God. listen, it's been a while. It's been a while for Dexter. Yeah. Just, like, let's just... My point is this. <laughs> it, it did have a cute butt. No how long that. does it take to kill somebody, to break into somebody's apartment, to kill them, to set up, to dr drill their head open, to take part of their brain I mean you know Vogel was the last one with him and I just am like watching the previews from next week and Dexter's like we gotta find this brain surgeon like really like why aren't you at least assuming that it's her like I am why Dexter and let's I wanted to backtrack I'm not sure if we mentioned this earlier but I wanted to backtrack a little bit and talk about Cassie's death again so it, let's yeah. just say that yeah. Vogel is behind all this who did she get to kill Cassie who did she do it herself? I can't imagine her actually doing it herself. Maybe she did it at gunpoint. Perhaps she forced Zach into it. And uh, I Nobody don't know. had timestamps. He had times. That's right. He had the timestamps. She she could have been the one to put that blade under his handle to cut his hand to get his blood. But I don't know. It's just so the pieces are there, but we can't like arrange them in the way that we want to see. And how does and Oliver fit into I was, this? Just what I was gonna say too. How does yeah, that like, yeah. British Ryan Gosling fit in? <laughs> I don't care, but he can have a few more episodes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you recognize that? I mean, no, you, he did not. He, are he, you sure he didn't at all? You think he was lying when he s saw that photo? I mean, he could have been. Honestly, it's. I oh, mean, no, I he know. said he said he looked familiar, yeah. but. Yeah. No, I thought he said he didn't look familiar. No, he said he looks familiar, but I don't know him. Yeah, okay. Well, I, regarding that scene, I wanted to talk about how prejudicial is that, that Quinn shows him one photo. Have you seen this guy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, like, no, well, Not it, no. <laughs> it wasn't like a formal line, a right. lineup or even a photo lineup. So with photo lineups, a little police uh, info right here. So they have at least, you know, between four and six photos out of people. And then they put the perpetrator like the suspect in there somewhere that was just so funny that <laughs> quinn did that have you seen this yeah. guy yeah this is the guy that i want to arrest <laughs> he's like making him say yeah yes. <laughs> he does look familiar mm -hmm. he, uh, yeah i must have seen him around <laughs> imagine if he showed someone else's photo oh uh, yeah i, I think we got a witness yeah, yeah. Quinn, quinn brings in like 10 witnesses like, <laughs> so you all saw him murder yeah. this woman uh, seems seems familiar yeah yeah i, I can see oh, that guys i've seen this guy <laughs> <laughs> they thought they saw him. Uh, anyway, me I'm just, you're right though. I'm wondering if for that for our hypothetical situation of Vogel to work, someone would have had she would have had to have someone kill mm -hmm. Cassie. 
So who could it have been? That because it would be the same person who put the razor blade under the door handle. Well, she mm-hmm. could have done that. That doesn't. Well, yeah, that that doesn't necessarily have to be the same person. Y- you know what, Stephen? You did mention something um, I think earlier about uh, what was it that Oliver may have been lying when uh, when he was saying like, oh, I'm I'm an architect, so I had to go do this one like presentation or something. I had a meeting. Remember? And then... Oh, he said he was a building contractor, but when yes. Jamie introduces him to Dexter, she says he's a writer or a poet or something like that. So could he have, in fact, been lying? Or did she say, or did she say he was an architect? Or, yeah, it, it could have... Yeah, we'll architect. Have to go back and look at him. Yeah, I don't remember. Poet, same thing. I thought it was thing. something different. <laughs> So where does Oliver fit into this too, though? He he could just be someone that has been introduced into Dexter's life to see if may, maybe she wants to see uh, Vogel wants to see if Dexter can recognize someone else who is a killer. Maybe he isn't really the killer, like we've been talking about with the beacon or the red flag on his head that says he's a killer. Maybe because he's being coerced and forced into this, he therefore doesn't have that same mojo, that same, like, vibe that other predatory killers give off because he's being forced into this. I honestly think the only person who could have killed Cassie was Oliver. And I think that Vogel has a connection to Oliver, and that's how he did it. Because, honestly, I keep saying that word, um, Dexter even says it was someone she knew, or she knew and Mm -hmm. let in. She didn't know Zach, and she was probably only frightened by Zach because he was... Knock, 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 knock on Dexter's door. Like, she would not let him in, no matter what. She'd be like, get the fuck out of here. So anyone, and Cassie's interactions are very limited in this show. She knows Jamie, she knows Dexter, and she knows Oliver. Those are the only people that she really has a connection with in the show. So Oliver was introduced a few episodes. And again, that's another situation where Dexter told Vogel about Cassie, I believe, and suddenly this new love interest appears. It is true. It was pretty quick that all of a sudden she had somebody she was dating when she was single. Yeah, and then Oliver's explaining to Quinn that we were talking about a future, and it, I know it's fast, but Quinn can totally relate to that. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, but that's a very good point that I that it was deep into her apartment. It wasn't like uh, right near the the front door. So, so it would have had to been someone with an intimate bond. Right. She's comfortable letting in. Perhaps, perhaps Oliver mm-hmm. is Vogel's son. Because they're she, both British. Ooh, or? No, because she's very <laughs> she's very hesitant about talking about her past. Mm. He said he was a writer, I believe, if I'm right. And she's also a psychology writer and everything like that. I don't know. He, she, he's just a pawn, so I really think that she's playing him. Well, most crimes are committed by people who have intimate contact with the persons. You know, it's usually someone they're dating, boyfriend, girlfriend, well, not usually girlfriend, but husband, wife. Swans. Yeah. Swans. <laughs> yeah, blunt objects. Yeah. It probably wasn't Jamie. <laughs> no. That's the big yeah, twist of the whole season. Yeah. <laughs> she did it it's holding her. a hamper <laughs> and, and just bludgeoned her <laughs> with a hamper on her hip. <laughs> Yeah. She, why does she always have a hamper in like every scene? It's just, like she's ridiculous. The, yeah. She's the housekeeper, the nanny. Uh. She's she's the Mary Poppins of Dexter. And it makes more sense too if you think about it, because Zach took pictures of Norma, and Zach had the pictures of Norma's crime scene, and of course he would share them with Vogel. So Vogel would have those to show yes. oh. somebody to recreate it, and then give him the blood to put on their nails. You won't get caught. They're gonna have they're gonna have substantial evidence. Yeah, and, and she probably wanted to see how much Dexter would cover up for well, Zach, right? Because he, he was just mm-hmm. like, oh, it's inconsequential. Yeah, the, the blood, it was just, you know, it was her own blood. No big deal. <laughs> I want to just say this to the fans yeah. out there who are listening to us. The only reason we're going so deep into these Vogel conspiracy theories is because she's the only character that was introduced at the beginning of the season and could possibly be the comparatively Trinity killer of this season. Like, she, she's the only person who could actually be the arch enemy of Dexter for this season. So it doesn't make sense for anyone else introduced after this episode, aside from Elway. But Elway mm-hmm. seems like the, the hero villain, like the hero that's against Dexter as opposed to the villain against Dexter. And I feel like mm-hmm. Elway's going to be the antagonist for Hannah. And that's, I mean, in turn, mm-hmm. will be an antagonist for Dexter. But, I mean, I think he's just after that, the purse, you know? Will Deb kill mm-hmm. Elway? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and yeah, and while we're talking about it, and Stephen, you just kind of said, and we've been kind of 
chatting about it. We love to hear um, your opinions, uh, as harsh as they can be. So, you know, <laughs> um, go on to iTunes. Give us five stars. Go you on to YouTube. That, yeah. You should. You should just give us five stars and talk about whatever. But we we like the stars. Talk about when we look, <laughs> when we look best. Just talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. We, <laughs> go ahead, Sean. The easy, and the easiest way to do that is if you're watching us on YouTube, that's awesome. You guys may have a YouTube account. Go ahead and type in your comments right there. If you want to download our podcast on iTunes, you can go to iTunes Store, type into the search bar, uh, Dexter After Buzz TV, and guess what? We're one of the first few podcasts that come up that talk about Dexter. So uh, go ahead and give us five stars, rate and comment us, and uh, you know what? It helps us out. It helps us to, to include you guys in the conversation. But what you can also do to help us keep the lights on here at After Buzz is to, in that same bar on the iTunes store, type in Serial Buddies or The Adventures of Serial Buddies because that's this awesome indie film written and directed by Kevin Undergaro, starring Maria Menounos, Christopher Lloyd, Chris, uh, Christopher McDonald, Artie Lang, Kathy Lee Gifford, so many cameos and uh, guest stars in the movie. You guys will enjoy it, and it's it's seriously what four ninety nine to download it. I, I downloaded it. It's awesome film. Combines Dumb and Dumber and Dexter into one mix matched awesome indie film in without it, Vogel. Without Vogel in it, <laughs> but there are some people with deep set eyes in there. <laughs> yeah, you guys will enjoy it. Anyway, uh, let's let's go. Let's talk about Hannah staying in Miami. Do you think she really will? Okay, can I just point out really quickly that uh, it was... <laughs> This was really the like cheesy um, rom com yeah. thing that happens at the end, where Dexter like runs, yeah. you know, to like the airplane. Except, you know, it's like not through the airport because she couldn't go to a real airport. But he like <laughs> runs and he's like, "Wait, Hannah, don't go. Stop. Stay here. I love you." Didn't like, I say you also sorry. You also said that in the, when they were in the car, and I can't remember what line he said. And then you were like, "Oh no, don't do that." <laughs> Did, oh yeah, I remember that too. Okay, didn't, I, yeah. Didn't I say when? There, when she was getting Hannah to come to dinner, and Dexter goes, I was like, "This is really like a bad soap opera." Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that was really bad. It just keeps going. Did she bake a quiche? Uh, a quiche. Uh, uh, <laughs> a quiche. You, you know what? I felt like this whole episode. Seriously, are we there yet? With Hannah, it went nowhere because they got all this stuff. Like they got the passport. They paid off the the plane guy already to take her to Nassau. And she's about to step on the plane. What's that guy going to do with it? Is he going to keep the cash? Dexter going to say, okay, give me half of it back? You know? Yeah, I mean, is she going to get her bag yeah. back? Like, aren't her cosmetics in there? <laughs> Doesn't she need her night cream? I mean, there are so many loose ends. But, yeah, what I was saying uh, when I it, about the car when I was like, ugh, don't do this to me. Uh, is Harry was saying, oh, maybe you have more priorities, higher priorities than killing. And that's what I, like, I really hope the series doesn't end with, ah, now that I have Hannah, we're just not going to kill anymore, and we're going to live happily ever after. I'm like, please, please don't end the series like that. Please don't make Dexter have this realization that, oh, this is more satisfying than murder. Well, like, they're going to yeah, have to like do something with Harrison. By, by the way, yeah. sp speaking of Dexter, we're talking about Dexter. JJ has an awesome shirt on right now. Oh, finally. So I haven't worn this this season yet. I wore it last season. We forgot to, to mention it. But for everybody that wants to go out and get one, you can show your Dexter love with an I love Dexter Morgan t-shirt. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. There you go. Great. We finally get to talk about it. You've worn it for two seasons. I love me some Dexter. So again, with the name, are we there yet? I really felt like before we watched the season, I said that like before the show. I was like, great, are we there yet? Is it finally going to be that are we actually to a storyline that makes sense? And now we are. And we, we're actually kind of putting things together now. Yes. All these loose strings are finally combining into one big, huge rope. Okay, we're putting things together. However, like, are we there yet? Uh, I felt like, uh, Stephen, we kind of talked about this, that, like, I feel like a lot of this episode was also, oh, great, like, all this stuff with Zach, and then now doesn't he's matter. dead. Yeah. Doesn't matter. You know, all this stuff with Hannah, it was fun. doesn't matter because you're staying, you know? They're, like, a lot of this was throwaway. At least they're mm -hmm. terminating some of the storylines. That's true. Thankfully. <laughs> At <least> they're eliminating. <laughs> but again, I said it last week. Could like, done in the writer's room. Last season of American Horror Story, they had too many storylines, and then they just had really annoying endings to them that were unsatisfactory, and this Zach one, a storyline, really unsatisfactory ending. I guess it was cool seeing his head out, but, I mean, 
it, it was an unsatisfactory because we did in it, it's seriously so funny how three or four episodes ago we get introduced to zach and then we think he's a creep we hate him we think he's a weirdo he's got that 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 weird sweep over hair right and then we <laughs> like as the episodes go on we've developed a relationship with him we actually had we his his visual presence is going to be missed on screen now, mm-hmm. yeah. I feel. I would have liked okay. a scene with Zach and whoever did that to him, with at least him talking. Like, I would have liked to see the moment when Zach died, because that would have been interesting. It would have been, okay, this is someone who's like Dexter, and how does he perceive death as it's coming to him? Like, I would have liked to have seen that, and maybe it would have made more sense if we had a scene him talking and we didn't have anyone else talking and it didn't tell us who it was, but maybe give us a hint to who it was with what kind of thing Zach says. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, Elena. No, you. Well, mm-hmm. I, I felt like it was really, this episode, it was very comedic overall, and there wasn't much stuff that happened that made me go like, <gasps> mm-hmm. and then finally we get to the last part, like the last couple of minutes, and that's where it happens, right? And you're right, Stephen. There should, I feel like there should have been something where we see Zach from like, be like behind the blinds from the outside of Dexter's apartment Mm -hmm. and then we see him in there and we maybe he gets tasered or he gets stabbed or whatever you know that that would have been a little bit more (gasps) and then when Dexter comes in (gasps) the brain surgeon so we get a double (gasps) whammy Mm -hmm. well my guess is that we might get a DVD oh yeah that would be interesting Hmm. if we got another DVD that would give us a little bit better insight than just a flashback yeah, because yeah. I, I was thinking, Stephen. I was thinking that the whole way his conversation would get revealed would be through a flashback, like Vogel saying, "Oh, and when I cut him in his throat, <laughs> that was the most satisfying thing." And then it like shows the conversation happening. <laughs> wow! I love your Vogel impression. That was Thanks. amazing. <laughs> I also throwing this out here. I don't know if you guys have more thoughts on this, but do you remember the boxes Vogel got that said his and hers? Mm-hmm. Yes. How do you think those fit in right now? She's sending them to herself. I that, mean... That's what I feel. That's... I'm not sure. And I don't know if... Uh, I still don't think that it was Dexter and Vogel as the his and hers. Yes, I remember you bringing that up. Um, and uh, Well, actually, I originally brought that up. And we I think we talked about how... No, that's too obvious, right? Yeah. But who knows, man? Like, these... It's just... We, we got four more episodes now. Dexter and Hannah... Oh, Dexter and Hannah. But but no. Vogel said she didn't know about her until this the last couple episodes, but right? But I feel like she's a liar. Yeah, she could be lying around. <laughs> maybe Vogel still, I don't know, maybe it's her creepiness. Like, she wants this, maybe she, you know, she wants Dexter. Maybe oh. she has some, you know, complex where uh-huh. she's in love with him, and that's why she's so jealous of all these other ladies, and yeah. I don't know. In episode two. Maybe she was, she, remember? She was on him yeah. like this, this yeah. oh gosh, just like this creepy mother-in-law, just, Dexter, I love you. We're yeah. not related. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you just... <laughs> I gotta say, maybe Vogel is Deb from the future. <laughs> Sorry. That was so nerdy, but I loved it. Uh... Yeah, there, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm I don't know. That's really just yeah. threw me off. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get back on track. Deb wants to leave. Are we there yet? Elway's firm. <laughs> okay, so this this whole episode, Deb is hunting Hannah McKay really on her. Um, she is totally disappointed that Dexter's lying to her. But once you know, mm-hmm. once they get together in that room, obviously she's still disappointed with with Hannah in there, and then Zach comes in. Everybody's there, right? And she's like, you know what? <laughs> Just keep me out of this. I don't <laughs> yeah. even want to know. And that, that was a wise move on her part, yep. I feel. Yep. Mm-hmm. And she wants to go back now, which which is so crazy. Like, I didn't think that we would see her go back to the mm-hmm. Miami-Dade Police Department in this season. How did you guys feel? Yeah, I, I didn't either, and I love to see that. I was, um, I'll let you talk about what comment you said about it, but I agree with you. It was nice to see her come back and be more like Deb, you know, in that moment, like processing it more like she would just be like, oh yeah, you're right, fuck, I'm out of here. (laughs) I I like like that. And I I liked having her make the decision to to go back. Well, we won't see it next season, so I guess they had to do it this season. (laughs) (laughs) Might be in the movie. Uh, Yeah, I really, (laughs) um, I, I really loved it too. I loved the idea of it and I, you know, it, it's all been making sense for for Deb. All of the steps make sense, and it was really like you could see the epiphany. She where she said, 
uh, my brother fucks up everything. It's just, <laughs> it's everything in her life. And, uh, and it was like this realization, like, oh, that's how it's gonna be if he's in my life. That's just how it is. And, uh, and I feel like she really got that and accepted it in that moment. And uh, felt like she might be ready to go back to Miami Metro, which I would be thrilled to see and see how she uh, it deals with that. Because I know she still has that weight of killing LaGuardia, so I would love to see I her. I think that's mm-hmm. the greatest thing she ever did in the series, though. It does. I mean, <laughs> Thank you. we were Thank waiting all series for LaGuardia to be, to be six feet under. <laughs> it was her best contribution <laughs> to, to the series to kill LaGuardia, someone who she's always had antagonism with, <laughs> and she was able to op her. Maybe she wasn't sad she killed LaGuardia. She's just sad she'll never top that. <laughs> Perhaps. So I'm we, sorry. We do see in the teaser that she's opening up her badge. I wonder, it couldn't be the lieutenant's badge because that's the job that obviously um, Batista. that Batista has, obviously, right now. He's occupying that position. Mm-hmm. And Miller, she, she hasn't been in the last couple episodes, but Sergeant Miller, she's a sergeant. So what's Deb going to be doing? Mm-hmm. She's no, gonna he be he said in? detective. He's just like, welcome okay. back, detective. Okay. So I'm sure she's just going to be put on the level that she was at before she made lieutenant or captain or any of that. Where she belongs. She's, she was so much better as a detective than as a, than as a lieutenant, I feel. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there's some some kind of friction between her and Elway. There's always been friction this whole season, but I feel like it's getting it's coming to a head almost now. Like we had that outburst from him last episode, right? And when he said, "You better think about it before you leave," you know, you better make, shape mm-hmm. up. You better make you know you're a wise decision. And he t- just him t- saying that and tapping on her door on the way out of her office, it feels like he wants to. Like, if you leave me, I'm going to do something to you. Like, I'm going to, I don't know. It's, he seems like he could be some kind of, like, violent person, too, behind I, the scenes. I, I think he just wants to, like, take a ride in Pound Town is, like, <laughs> the thing. Well, didn't I? Like, you, you, I agree with you. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, I think it's a sexual frustration. He's had a crush on her, and he wants to be with her, but she's denying him. And I think he feels like, you know, he said last time, like, um, I gave you this opportunity. You know, I you, you had this shitty life, and I... I I hired you when you know I shouldn't have, and be, gave you this chance. And so I think he feels like kind of a slap in the face that she just like kind of disrespects the situation he has for her, and that you know now is kind of you know not really taking his advances. Didn't I compare you know? him to um, what's his face, Hannah's husband? Last Miles. Last, Miles yeah, last week that. I compared his relationship with Deb to Miles's relationship with Hannah, and then Dexter's the one on the outside in both cases, because. Deb has the feelings for Dexter in this case, so she's not going after Elway, like she has no interest in him, and he wants to control her. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Agreed. Well, um, th- did we want to talk about Deb's evolution? You, you, you want to talk about that? Well, I right think, I think I did. Oh, you did already. Yeah. We need to talk yeah. about Quinn Part of her, and Jamie. And I was just going to say of Deb's evolution is I'm happy to see the kiss that's going to happen next time with back with Quinn. Oh, Quinn. Oh. I've been wanting that for so long. <laughs> and just when he moved in with Jamie. Man, he had such, oh. Quinn had such a bad scene with Jamie where they were talking yeah. and he he's, she asked him a total death trap question as a man. It's like, you're yeah. not supposed to say, well, this is what Deb would have done. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it's, 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 that's not a death trap question. If she says, if it were Deb, you wouldn't have any, uh, you would stay. All he would have to say is, that's not true. And if you want me to stay, I'll stay with you. He doesn't have to be an idiot and be like, no, Deb would do this, like, because I'm still in love with her. <laughs> yeah. like, you, remember, you remember it's Quinn we're talking about. Right, yeah. he's an idiot, that's fine. But <laughs> but it's not a death trap question. It's like one of those questions, she just needs to be reassured in her relationship. She's yes. really freaking out right now. Her One of her friends was just murdered right next door. By the way, why is it okay with Dexter that Harrison just, like, Goes to live with yeah. Quinn and Jamie for a week. Why is that okay? I just he's going yeah. to the keys, man. He <laughs> don't he don't need that baggage. <laughs> he don't, I know it's like uh. he's got to balance his new his new wife potentially and his new son, right? <laughs> Zach. I, yeah. I, I gotta mean, say, I loved Quinn's mm-hmm. react interaction with Harrison though. Yeah, yeah, kid, and you got cartoons to watch. Do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> poor Harrison is just. Uh, what a disaster. Hey, it takes a yeah. village to raise a child. Yeah, this is a pretty <laughs> pretty sloppy village. I just... 
Is first. this the second person who's been killed in Dexter's apartment? Well, that wasn't his apartment, but apartment complex? Perhaps. Who, who else no, died? Can, no, um, Zach. Zach's dead in his apartment. Oh, yeah. And then, or are you talking about just this season? Yeah, it's just this season. Well, I guess next, last season we had the writer was killed in his apartment. Or oh, was that? That's right. He did. Yeah, he, okay. he dropped dead there thanks to poisoning from Hannah McKay. Lovely. The passionate poisoner. <laughs> so, what was the other thing that Dexter said? The fiendish florist. Yeah. yeah. That was such a, a very color colorful scene. It's like very. It's like the picturesque. Oh, we're a couple on the beach at a little picnic table. I thought it was very interesting how they filmed it. Yet we're watching out for sheriff's officers. Mm. Yeah. Also, sure. like, it was weird that Dexter kept his shoes on in the sand, don't you think? I mean, <laughs> if you're going to be, like, picturesque and having, like, shrimp cocktails, like... It made me hungry. Yeah. Well, that's okay. <laughs> but they were talking about their bottom feet are, like, garbage. Like, why did that Taking make out the hungry? trash. Yeah. <laughs> that was so funny that they, they made a comparison between... <laughs> Dexter and shrimp. I'm the yeah. shrimp. I'm the evil shrimp <laughs> that cuts down the bad garbage yep. in the ocean. Yeah, that's not sexy, Dexter. Like, get it together. <laughs> so before we go into news, you want to talk about the whole should be a web series or should be like a little web series thing with Nikki and Masuka. And then we have Matthews involved in it now, too. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Brent William Henry on our YouTube channel said, Steven, you are so right on with Masuka's long lost daughter storyline working better as a web series. This is a premium cable television series and the viewers deserve better news. Uh, oh, he had some, also, also some news. Uh, news, Marvel comic has a Dexter comic book. It is written by Jeff Lindsay and illustrated by Dale Bohr Talajic. Very cool. Thanks for your comment, Brent. So yeah, I feel like I agree with him. I agree with you, Stephen. Yeah, it should have been a web series. It should have been some something extra for the fans out there. Like the only things that I see that are extra that Showtime's putting out there is oh, check out the scene from the next episode coming up, or um, g go do the get glue sticker thing. Get your badge from get glue. They could have they could have seriously done so much. Mm -hmm. well, I feel and and focused more on stuff. Go ahead, Anna. I, I think, you know, as much as I love C.S. Lee, I think they just couldn't get storylines for him or couldn't figure out how to weave him into the main storyline so that they just, like, came up with this side thing. Which, so I think they honestly would have been better just killing him off in the first episode or two. Um, and I, I mean, I love I love C.S. Lee. I love Masuka as a character. Uh, but it just, yeah, you know, none of it makes sense. Like, obviously, you can't. Be, there can't be smoke in a science lab like where you're like have evidence like that that would never happen I just you know and Matthews like yeah. the peanut gallery yeah. seeing Matthews and Quinn interact on a joking basis and then talk and then having Matthews talk about Quinn on the case I mean why is he even dealing with Quinn he's not up for sergeant anymore he doesn't talk to him ever yeah. anywhere else yeah and it was only when he was up for sergeant that he was intimidating him and now they have no reason to have interaction again yeah yeah well I think that about does it for us on these topics. Let's, <laughs> let's move into our news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. So yeah, that was a that was a big deal. I feel with the with our fan t uh, commenting at us, Brent. Thank you for that. Uh, Dexter comic book gonna be coming out, and most importantly, it's written by Jeff Lindsay, who wrote the Dexter book, Darkly Dreaming Dexter, and and the subsequent books that have followed after. I think they're up on s six books right now, Stephen. Maybe uh, seven. The new one comes out in September, I believe. It's the seventh. The seventh book. Mm. Wow. And I I enjoyed the first book so much. It it felt like it felt like the first season of Dexter. You know, it's just like, ooh, I love this show. And it was a great book. I, I, unfortunately, I haven't read the following books yet. But um, you guys had some interesting news and gossip, right? Um, oh, uh, I just had, you had I just had a quick thing that yeah. it, when Dexter ends, if we can all, we are all suffering withdrawal from Michael C. Hall. He is going to be in two upcoming movies. Um, one is called Cold in July, and the other one is called I Fought the Law. Um, and that one, I Fought the Law, has Malin Ackerman, Giovanni Ribisi, and Melissa Leo. So I'm pretty excited to see that one. Very good. Um, one of our fans actually uh, tweeted at me, and I, I, I actually didn't put it into my news and gossip folder on here on my iPad. But um, go if you guys want to go ahead and check out my Twitter account at Sean Austin O. Sean is spelled S E A N Austin O. And uh, you can actually go ahead and see the the pictures that we I retweeted, which is from uh, thanks to our fan Phil. Uh, there are some behind-the-scenes warning. These are spoiler pictures of upcoming episodes on this final season of Dexter. And uh, there are... Do you want to hit the spoiler alert button, please, <laughs> Steven? Spoiler alert! 
This is spoiler alert. Thank you, Stephen. This is muy importante. Spoiler alert. I'm sorry, Sean. <laughs> because some of these pictures show Dexter on his boat, Michael C. Hall on the slice of life with his sister Deb jennifer carpenter on there they're on the boat and she's and it looks like they're near a yacht maybe they're coming down from another boat down to dexter slice of life and she looks like she's on a table and she's wearing a white gown maybe they're just covering up for some reason or i i don't know and she they, maybe he's gonna have her on the table by the end of the episode we don't know what's gonna happen exactly but this is a little like nugget of information that is such a big spoiler we're probably gonna see jennifer carpenter aka deb under dexter's knife it was on a stretcher though Whoa. actually Whoa. on the stretcher thank you yeah. steven so it's just so big big pieces of information thanks to our fan phil for tweeting that at us um you can see it. see that mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, see it see it on my twitter account um, just a shout out if you do like Zach's character or the actor who portrays him. His actor's name is Sam Underwood, and you can see him in a New York love story later this year. We also have some other comments from fans on our YouTube channel from Jeremy Kennedy. Love your haircut, Steven. Hey, Daddy. Hey, hey Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. Yes, Jeremy has been following many of my shows that I do. <laughs> uh, we also got a tweet from <laughs> at Jen in Georgia, and she said, at Sean Austin, no, I cannot, I can't believe you don't know Julian Sands. He was the original warlock. So Julian Sands was the guy who played Miles Kastner. Yes, I have seen him places before, but when he was younger, I haven't seen him recently. And he is just, he looks so different to me. I did not recognize him. Did anybody else recognize him? Nope. <laughs> not as a name, I just just the face but I recognize. He, oh, yeah, he always plays bad guys, apparently, <laughs> in movies. Um, we also got a couple more comments here that I wanted to read out. Uh, from Phil's 781 this season is disappointing so far very slow we need some oh my god moments hey we got an oh my god moment tonight thank goodness mm -hmm. we got to see the brain surgeon is still up and about anyway let's go ahead and move into our predictions and now you're after buzz tv prediction predictions Ooh, a little fade in there yeah. <laughs> well I have a very simple prediction. It's only gonna take two sentences. Vogel is the killer, <laughs> and she kills others who she forces to kill, to make kill, rather. Thus, she makes them fit the code. <laughs> I feel like we've like decided on this prediction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I feel yeah. like I feel like we all agree at this mm -hmm. moment. Does anybody else have any other predictions? Other I than do. Um, I think that you know, since Deb and Quinn are gonna like get back together, she's gonna like not care about Hannah anymore until she sees um, Hannah and Dexter and together with Harrison, and then she's gonna like lose it and and either kill Hannah herself or like insist that Dexter kills her. <gasps> hmm. Or she'll give her up to Elway again. Something. JJ. Hmm. I was just gonna say that Vogel's gonna die. Good. Good. I'm keeping it simple tonight. I still think Oliver's involved somehow, and we're probably gonna find out. Yeah. Probably not next episode, but probably in uh, two episodes or so. So I think that's uh, mm -hmm. that about does it for Great. us here at After Buzz TV. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on our awesome podcast here. Uh, if you guys want to follow us, be sure to follow me. Give me a follow at Sean Austin O on Twitter. You can follow me on a couple at Copple for Mayor, K O P P E L F O R M A Y O R. <laughs> and I'm at JJ Jorgens. And you can find me at Stephen Lemieux. We're doing the Twisted Graceland or Get Out Alive with Bear Girls after show here at After Buzz TV. Very good. We'll buzz with you guys next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.